Hello, this is Shelly Ungrank with Heartland Realty in DeSoto, Missouri. And um, thank you for um, joining in to my YouTube video. Um, if you haven't seen one of these before, I do a few videos on no certain time frame, just when things um, kind of hit my mind and I feel like these are maybe some topics that I want to point out. I work with a lot of buyers and sellers um, in this area. I am in rural um, Missouri, kind of in Jefferson County. But, you know, the topics that I talk about hopefully will resonate with buyers, you know, all over the country with things that, that just they need to be educated about and think about when they're buying a home. So I just sort of like to say what's on my mind, whatever I'm thinking about. Um, so I, like I say, work in DeSoto, um, Missouri. And, you know, I sell, just to give you an idea, between four and maybe $8 million a year, depending on what's going on with the economy and what's, you know, going on um, in this market. But I have been doing this for a little over 13 years, just to give you a little bit of background. So working with buyers, this is my topic for today. And um, I hope this helps um, someone out there, some of you out there. A lot of times I feel like buyers, you know, you look at several homes, um, of course, and you're trying to weigh out what is important to you and what you want. You know, maybe there's two houses and you're on the fence. So these are kind of important topics that I think people need to ask themselves, not so much to make you not want to buy a house, but to be um, considered in your number for the house. Things that, you know, you may not think about when you're writing the offer, but they're important things that need to be considered when you're thinking about the number that you might want to put on that contract. So um, these are just a few things. And like I say, pretty, everyone likes to walk into the house and see, you know, the, the cutesy and the pretty things. I mean, me included, I enjoy that part of the job as well. But you really have to go beyond what you're looking at visually. And, you know, when you're making an offer and think about some of the things that maybe you're not noticing um, when you're just walking through the house. So if you're, let's just say you're comparing two houses, um, you know, on a spreadsheet or however, whatever your method is, these are some of the things that I think you really need to look at when you're comparing houses. You know, the, the age of the roof is huge. Uh, a, a roof is a very, um, you know, it's not the most expensive item, I wouldn't necessarily say in, in all cases, but it's definitely up there as one of the most expensive things. And, you know, putting on a new roof is not something you want to do as a new homeowner, or at least if you're going to have to, maybe for some reason, you know, going in, you know, the roof doesn't have a lot of life left, but you still just really want this house. That's something you really need to think about when you're paying for the house. How much is a new roof going to cost? Um, not only, and even if it's not leaking, I just want to point out that a lot of times it's an insurance issue. You know, insurance companies look at your roof and sometimes will not insure you or require that you do some roof um, repair. So it's not only important um, for you, it may, be, it may have a lot to do with your insurance and what kind of rates you're going to get, or even if an insurance company is going to insure the house and insure the roof. So the roof is one thing you really want to take into consideration. If the house has a septic, I can't stress to you how important it is to get a septic inspection. Um, and we are in a rural area, so that's a very common thing in our area. And there, at least in Jefferson County and even in Missouri, there are a lot of, you know, rules about how septics have to be installed and, you know, a, a lot of regulations. So I encourage you to really dive into that with, you know, wherever you live, you know, do a little bit of research and find out about a septic and what it would cost you if you have to have a new one. Um, everybody likes to have a septic because you don't have any sewer bills, just like with a well, you don't have any water bills, but eventually, you know, like anything else with the house, it's going to require some maintenance and that's not a bad thing. It's just something that you need to be aware of and educate yourself on. Um, you need to, when you're doing your spreadsheet, go through the appliances, you know, what's going to stay. I mean, normally or uh, always in, at least in, in, um, in here. Um, you know, the stove, a built-in microwave, um, a dishwasher is all considered an attachment, so it's going to stay. A refrigerator and a washer and dryer are negotiable items. They're not automatically going to stay. So even with the items that are going to stay, you want to look at the age of those appliances um, and, you know, kind of take that into consideration. If you're weighing out two houses and one has new stainless steel appliances and one has, you know, 10-year-old appliances, that's a factor. And you need to think about that because appliances, like anything else, don't last forever. 
Um, if there's a shed outside, especially one that's portable, you want to think about that and make sure that you write that into your offer if you want that shed to stay. They're not considered attachments because they can be moved. So make sure that if there's a shed on the property, you you know, you factor that in price-wise and you make sure that if you want that shed and that's a deal breaker for you that you've written that into the contract. It's always a good idea always to look at the utilities. You know, you can call um, the utility companies, the electric company, um, you know, and find out what an average utility bill cost for this house. Cause you know, the two houses that are the same size don't always have the same amount of utility costs due to insulation. Of course, personal preference, how warm you wanna keep it. There's a lot of different factors that can go into a utility um, charges. And you might wanna do your research on that just a little bit in taxes. Someone recently actually told me in our area that one of the reasons that they liked living in Jefferson County um, was because of the, you know, the taxes weren't quite as expensive. And the farther south you go from where we live, they even get less expensive. Um, and that's a factor, you know, and just, I'm not saying that it should be the only thing you look at, but it's going to be a part of your payment and part of your responsibility. So if you're looking at two houses, you know, and maybe just if you're having to be in an area where you're right on the county line, you know, those two houses, one in one county and one in the other may have a very different, you know, tax amount that you're going to be paying. So it is something that you want to look at and think about. Um, so that's really the points that I wanted to make today. The things that I, I recently spoke to some buyers and these are some of the things that we kind of went through to help them make their decision. And I thought to myself, well, that's a perfect video that could help a lot of other people with their decision making. So I just really wanted to share those thoughts with you. So I appreciate you, um, logging in today and looking at this and I would appreciate it if you like it share it, go on to Facebook and um, do the same thing. I really appreciate, you know, any um, feedback that I can get. And um, this is Easter weekend. Um, so I just want to say happy Easter, everybody. And thank you for tuning in.